Let's go ahead and take a look at this one. This is going to be a double replacement reaction to uh, make an overall, a net ionic equation and a total ionic equation. And you're gonna be handwriting this out and doing it as a file upload. The problem we have here, it says for the following unbalanced double replacement reaction, write out the overall reaction, including reactants and products. Oops, sorry about that. Each reactant and product must also have its state or phase included. The reaction must be balanced. Good. The total ion, total ion equation, well, that should say total ionic. I don't know if I'll get a chance to fix that. And then that ionic equation. And so um, here's the uh, reactants that you've been given. Uh, cobalt uh, three bromide plus uh, potassium sulfide. Mm -hmm popular chemical today. And uh, I'm going to actually go ahead and do this on a separate piece of paper, because otherwise I don't know if I'll have enough room. And I'm telling you that the two of these are aqueous, so we don't have to worry about that. But now our products are going to be, so take the cobalt which is a cobalt three plus. And we know that because it takes three bromides and uh, bromide is one of the halogens and halogens have minus one charges. So three minus ones means that the cobalt has to be plus three. And the bromide is minus one. The potassium is in group one, so that's just K plus. Sulfide is two minus. And now we put these together to make balanced compounds, meaning that whatever we write over on this side, the pluses and the minuses within the compounds have to cancel out. So since one of them is gonna take the K, the positive cation here, and the anion, the bromide, and since that's a plus one minus one, we've got just KBr. And then saving some room to write the phase or state there. Now I've got cobalt three and sulfide. I'm gonna crisscross them to end up with cobalt two, sulfide three as the subscripts. And if I think about this, this is going to be cobalt three plus, sulfide two minus, and I've just crisscrossed them to get their subscripts. Next step is to see, according to our solubility rules, what's soluble or insoluble. And to, to do that, I know that according to rule number one, all common compounds of group one are soluble. So AQ, aqueous for that. And then there is a rule, rule number six for sulfides. And rule number six for sulfides says, except for rule number one in calcium, barium, strontium, magnesium, sulfides are insoluble. And we're not dealing with any of those, we're dealing with cobalt three sulfide. So this will be a solid. It's a long process, I know, but um, and we still haven't balanced this, but this is our, what we're working on as our overall reaction. Get on the page there. There we go. Now we have to balance it. And so you know my system hopefully by now for balancing. Put lines in front of them. Put a uh, one coefficient in front of the thing with the most different types of atoms. And if there's a tie, which there is here, then the most actual atoms, I see five atoms over here. So I'm gonna put a one right here. And then I'm gonna balance my cobalts. That means that I'm gonna need a two for cobalt three bromide. And then I'm gonna balance my sulfurs. I have three here. That means I need a three in front of the potassium sulfide. And then, in my perfect world, I have six bromides, and I, or sorry, potassiums and six bromides. 
so I need a six right there. That is now balanced. You can double check things and you'll find out that it's okay. Now, um, and that is our overall reaction with all the formulas, good formulas, with all the phases. Now we're ready to do our net ionic equation. Our NIE, remember, takes anything that's aqueous and breaks it into ions. And anything that's solid, liquid, or gas stays as solid, liquid, or gas. This is going to be quite long because there's a lot of ions. Maybe I'll write a teeny bit smaller here. I've got two cobalts. And those are cobalt plus three, as we've already noted. And I've got two times three. I've got six bromides. I've also got three times two, I've got six potassium ions. And three sulfide ions with their charges, just like so. And since I'm almost out of space, I am gonna put my products down here. On my product side, I have six aqueous potassium ions. six aqueous bromide ions. And don't break up solids, liquids, or gases. I just have cobalt two, cobalt three, sulfide solid. And that is my net ionic equation. When asked why we do net ionic equations, I will tell you that net ionic equations represent the actual states of the things in the beaker that you've got. For example, if I was to look inside the beaker that I've added these two solutions together and actually we'll draw an Erlenmeyer flask of it with some solution in it, we would actually see after we mix these two together that we still have K plus ions, Br minus ions, Right, so this is going to be the products. And you're going to have the cobalt 3 sulfide as a pile of solid down at the bottom. But the potassium and the bromide, they will be floating around in solution with their hydration shells that we've had you draw as well. And before we mix them together, all of these ions were in test tubes or beakers. Let's draw them in beakers because I think that'll be easier. So, and in one beaker we had uh, cobalt 3 bromide, so we've got cobalt 3 plus, bromide minus, around in solution. It's not Right, aqueous means they're not together, they're floating around in solutions separately. Same thing for the potassium and the sulfide. Right, so the NIE represents the physical states of the actual things, whereas the overall reaction represents uh, sort of how we would do the math. Like that's, we usually use the overall for math we use the NIE to understand what actually is happening. And then we do the TIE. The TIE is the total ionic equation. And we use the total ionic equation to tell what reaction actually happened because we've crossed out the spectator ions. Spectator ions in this one, well, spectator ions, if you remember, are going to be the ions that are exactly identical on both the reactants and the product side. That's going to be potassium, and it's also going to be bromide. So I have crossed out spectators. And now I'm going to write my TIE, which is everything left. And the total ionic equation has two cobalt-3 ions. plus three sulfide ions, 
goes to cobalt three sulfide solid. <laughs> and I key, I know I so I'm totally with you if every time I say cobalt three because cobalt three is the charge, but I write two anyway. Uh, how about CO two S three for now? And why do we do the total ionic equation? We do it because this is the actual reaction. And this actual reaction or the actual reaction forms ionic bonds to make an ionic solid. Forms ionic bonds to make this, which is an ionic solid. Hope that helps.